Welcome to another episode of The D Gentleman Show. I'm Brett Ernst. Once again, we got Lamar Mitchell, Jay Rude, and we have a special guest in the house, Mr. Matt Reif. Keep it going for Matt. Matt's uh, performing at the Laugh Factory here in Vegas. He's been on MTV's Wild and Out. He's an amazing comedian and a good friend. Matt, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me, man. Um, so let, let's see what we're going to talk about today. We got uh, Kareem Hunt we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about uh, Kyler Murray. Oh, and uh, me and Alex, who, by the way, couldn't make it because he missed his flight. True We went to, uh, yeah, kid. We went to 1923 Bourbon Bar to learn about bourbon. So it's exciting. Let's kick it off. So we have a new 20. 20 we have a new 20, 20. 20. He's younger than Alex, this kid. How old is Alex? Alex is 26. Old, dude. Yeah, old. relax. Old. Take it easy. Wow. Take it easy. Stop wow. the right. Old. So uh, we got an interesting show. A lot of hot topics today. While we're on the subject, though, Brett. Hey, I... uh, uh, Paul, would you mind putting up a picture of 25 year old Brett? For oh, me, yeah. Please? Oh, yeah, please. Uh, Why are we putting 25 year old Brett up again? Uh, oh, oh, there it is. Oh, I didn't. There sorry. it is. Look at the pants. <laughs> sorry, I asked for 25 year old Brett. What? Nice. Year old what is that? Oh. oh. Let's go back to 22-year-old Jay. Jay. 22-year-old Jay is tremendous. Yeah. Wow. Look at the Man, mullet. Look at wow. that. That must have... That like was Jonathan Kite. He looks exactly like Jonathan Kite. <laughs> Dude. Wow. Hey, that is... I think, I think that's a swatch. A swatch we, watch. You know what that is? A, huh? a swatch watch? Swatch watch. Wow. Yeah, I think that's Wait, can, we got to analyze this, please. Yeah. yeah, okay. First of all, the Rolled pants are pants. pegged at the bottom. Yeah, yeah he was in style. they're not hyped up. They go shin high. Well, those are no, pegged no, pants. No, no, no. That was a big time. deal back then. Style, yeah. You got your style. sleeves rolled up. Yep. I don't know what are those skids? What are those? Zubas? I don't know. Look at it. <laughs> Flat belly. Flat, Flat belly. belly. Look at that. I mean, look like at this. the uh, mullet though. That's yeah. a strong look. That's what what, what do they say about the mullet? Achy breaky. Absolutely. What year is this guy? Let me guess. Let me guess. 88. 88. 80, yeah, 88. Wow. Absolutely. Actually, 87. Sorry, 87. What year were you? Wow. This, this 95. Was in the, this 95. Was in the <laughs> Can we get a picture of 25-year-old Matt? Oh. 25-year-old Lamar, right? Uh, <laughs> really? You made it? We had to go all the way for that Sorry, joke? I actually, I'm going to be married 24, I'm going to be married longer than you've been alive this year. How, how long have you been married? 24 years. Why? Get, and were you, can we get back can to the get, picture? Can we get 25-year-old Brett off the screen? Yeah, get 25-year-old Brett. <laughs> That's good. good looking kid, though. That's good. Let's get into hot topics. Yeah. Couldn't been, Wait, no, I want to go back to Jay Roo. Right, uh, go back to Jay. I want to see Jay. Were you married at this? Was, did you? Were you married at this? I was this not. Age? No, no way. Was not. So, you, but I'm saying you must have been married. How how much longer after this did you meet your wife? Uh, five years. Okay. Now, and this is in New Mexico. <laughs> oh uh, man. This is in New Mexico. Yeah, New Mexico State University. Yeah. This is in the dorm at New Mexico State University. And no. this, and you so were, this was actually you were bookmaking this was, at this, this age. Twenty year old. No, no, no. Jay, no. He wasn't bookmaking at that time. He was cleaning out. Well, what were you cleaning no, up? No, no, I was. I was. Weren't I started booking those, uh, a year after porta potties. This, when I first moved in the, the door. Porta potties. Oh, yeah, porta potties. He was cleaning up porta potties at that. Just time. really quick, could you imagine that trying to come and collect his money? <laughs> 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 Did you? I had a sawed-off baseball bat in my truck. Did you pull up on a skateboard? A sawed-off baseball bat. Yeah. <laughs> Been like, you know. Uh, I love that. That's tremendous. Uh, it, not for nothing. I can see you still kind of look the same. A little bit. You can see it in the face. Yeah. yeah. You look kind of smug. A little different in this area right yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's get to hot topics. Wow. That's great. All right. Let's get in. Let's get into it. Are we ready? Well, there we go. Hot topic. There's our little our, our little card. There you go. So as you all know, Kareem Hunt was signed by the Cleveland Browns, and uh, this is certainly going to make the team better. But is it going to fail in the court of public opinion? And um, the other question is, how does this make the NFL look because of, you know, what's pending with Kareem Hunt? I mean, I'm still confused considering they gave uh, Zeke a six-game suspension when he there was no evidence and, and it was no in charges. college. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm still, uh, is he allowed to play? Is the well, NFL he's... good with this? I mean, just because they sign him doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to be on the field next year. Yeah, right. But, not... I mean, it's the Browns, you know? They're giving him a pass because mm. they're doing anything they can to become relevant, and which is crazy because... We have the Browns at like 18 to one right now to win the Super Bowl, which I, I mean, I have to have a discussion with my team because that, that's nuts. We sh they should be at least 25. <laughs> and I've never seen the Browns under 50, I think, in my entire last 20 some years in Vegas booking, you know, so this is uncharted territory. Well, we're definitely going to win. The I think they definitely should win the North. They have to. Right. They have to. They won't win the North. Oh, my God. You really don't think so? Oh, yeah. Well, we know Pittsburgh, which well, is another topic later. Out. Yeah, Pittsburgh will find a way. Especially with all this Antonio Brown stuff going on, they'll find a way. I mean, they'll be better than Cincinnati. 
Um, and Baltimore, I mean. Well, you got Lamar yeah. Jackson. He should be great. Yeah, well. <laughs> I'm going to put up a prop. Uh, we, at the end of week five, I think, uh, will Lamar Jackson's uh, touchdown passes or interceptions be more? Which will be more? We're going to put that prop up this year. And, Are you really? Yeah, and, and, and I'm going to shade the hell out of interceptions. That's good to know. I'm writing that down. What does that mean to shade the hell out of interceptions? That he's, he's going yeah, to. That's going to be a big favorite. The interception is going to be much bigger. He might have 20 rushing. But I'm saying passing. Passing touchdown but, versus interception. But let's get back to the Cream Hunt thing and, and, and the Browns. We do know that, you know, this is going to make – the Browns really have nothing to lose. And I think it's because it's the Browns. The NFL is like, you know, well, people are like, we'll overlook it. Like, if this were the Cowboys, they would be done in the press. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree who, with that. Who was the player that was dropped by the – was it the Niners and then just recently was signed by one of the other teams? I mean, he was signed like that. Oh, his the girl, linebacker. Yeah, yeah, the linebacker. His his uh, girlfriend didn't press charges, and he was signed like that by another team. I think it was Tampa Bay that nobody really talks about, but you're right. If it, was, it, if it was somebody like the Cowboys or the Giants or a team like the Patriots, you know, the NFL would be, hey, let's watch out what you're doing. It was Reuben Foster. Reuben Foster, yeah. thank you. Yeah, so, I mean, I think with it being Cleveland, because they haven't been relevant, uh, I know with Baker there and the, their 0-16 season, it's a big deal for them to sign it, where in the court of public opinion, it's not going to be brought up as much as if it was Dallas. Cleveland could sign Ted Bundy, and uh, people would be like, we understand. I don't think the final hammers come down on this, though. I mean, he might not play. I mean, they might come out and say that he's... Still, you might get suspended. I mean, they for still three have years. Chubb at the end of the yeah. day, like who's right. still a beast. Like I, I don't think I don't think this affects them in the public eye badly whatsoever. You're yeah, from Ohio. Like, are I'm you? from Ohio. That's all I, I know. Cleveland needs this win. Mm -hmm. Like the people of Cleveland couldn't care less about the the news going on around Kareem Hunt. They just want him to run for 120 yards a game and bring a ring. I mean, he's still. I mean, he's still he's still a baller. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think uh, Dorsey, when he you know took a flyer on him, I mean, the salary is what. 600,000 or around there. I mean, so even if he plays half the season, because he gets suspended and he plays half the season, you're looking at 600,000 for this guy. He knows him from Kansas City when he was a GM in Kansas City. So Dorsey knows him and he knows what kind of talent he is. And he's a talent, like you said. I mean, I, even, even if he's suspended for the first six, eight games, it, again, I, it, yeah. it's a win already. It's a win they for have, Cleveland. They no haven't taken what. the heat. And that eliminates the possibility of injuries before the playoffs. I'm actually not even opposed to a suspension just yeah. for that reason. Let Chubb get his snaps, second half of the season. Let him get his snaps in. Uh, yeah, hey, don't forget about Duke. You know where Duke is from. The U, baby. That's right. The U. That's no, right. Get, getting he's back to this. so well is, since he's been there. Hey, he has. He's, he's got a couple touchdowns. Yeah, he's done he good in, the, in the red zone. But again, I, I don't see Cleveland really getting any heat for this just because, first of all, it's, it's low risk for them. I, I mean, they're not, they didn't have to trade for the pick, right? right? You, you know they're not going to have to pay top dollar for them. And uh, again, nobody cares about the Browns. Worst case scenario, they could hold him while all this is going on, trade him for something better next year. Uh, yeah, I mean, it just depends on, on what, what the NFL, what were you going to say, John? I just think they go from empathetic, you know, team to uh, villain-esque in a way. They Who, could, Cleveland? Yeah, they could become villain-esque in a way. I don't think they, it's going to affect him. And, and again, yeah. if, if the NFL, uh, we, you know, again, as we, we see a lot in the, in the media, we, even though there's a videotape of everything, you know what I mean, we still have to wait until the judgment is, is, is in before they can enact the punishment. So let's just say he's suspended six games. If he's suspended indefinitely, then there's no harm, no foul for Cleveland. Mm -hmm. But if and, he's only suspended six games... It's e like even a season, and they got him the following right, season. Right, it's they a win for right. Cleveland. I mean, exactly. If, if you look at it like from a transactional standpoint, like a, a Wall Street trade, right? They're buying, they're buying an option on Amazon at eight hundred dollars when it's trading at sixteen hundred dollars right now, mm -hmm. or even an option on Amazon for a hundred dollars, basically, when it's trading at sixteen hundred dollars. They're buying his option, and they're going to write it out, like you said. I mean, they have got no downside by just holding on to him, paying him. Whatever it is, even if he's suspended, if he gets suspended, he's not going to get any money. But they have his rights. Yeah, that's right. basically that's basically. So you transactionally, know it's a great move. So again, I think the Cleveland Browns taking a risk um, with Kareem Hunt. It's a smart risk, you know. If the NFL bases judgment on him, then they had, they didn't lose anything. And if the NFL suspends him six games or a season, now they got the rights. Right. And again, court of public opinion. Nobody cares about the Browns but Cleveland.
People in Cleveland don't even care about the Browns. <laughs> they're the only fans of it. I was there, hey, by the hey. way, when they won against the Jets. I was going to say, they were pretty happy when they opened the beer fridges all Dude, over, all over the I city. was at that game, and you would have thought they won the Super Bowl. They could sign Ted Bundy, and, and everybody would have, NFL would be like, we get yeah, it, yeah. we get it. They could bring him away. Yeah, if, if Ted Bundy could win for the Browns, yeah. then we'd we could be okay with Bob Yard, sign him. Worst case scenario, Kareem can play for the Cavs, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, right, can he? <laughs> Anybody can. <laughs> Oh, I thought you were going to tell me he was like an NBA prospect. No. Well, <laughs> speaking of players that could play two sports, Kyler Murray has committed to play football now. Yay, All right. Kyler. Do you agree with this decision? I agree 100%. Now, does, it, now does this... I, I couldn't disagree more. I mean, well, I, from, from a personal standpoint, I think baseball, he's got the potential to have a much stronger, longer career, but... Monetarily. I get it. Your passion is your passion. But Kyler was literally not even, like, John, you were saying this morning, he wasn't even going to probably play uh, up, in the, up in the majors. They were he would have been a minor leaguer oh, yeah. for a period of time. Yeah. Right. I mean, monetarily, baseball is the way to go. But for right now here, he's going to get drafted, and he's going to be on a team playing in the big leagues right away. Look at guaranteed money. Guaranteed money, exactly. So a quicker payday. Right. He has the tools to play in the NFL now as a 5'9 quarterback. Right. Some of the smaller quarterbacks, as I call them, vertically challenged. I love these guys, That's some of these guys. Yourself. VC, welcome to the VC world. Well, here, here's another question. Uh, if, Cl if Cliff, blah, I can't even say, if Cliff Klingsbury didn't say he would draft him, okay, right away, do you think he would have just stayed with, the ba with baseball? No, but he said that. Eight months ago. I know, but it's he just, just reiterated it. Yeah, he reiterated right. it again. No, he didn't. He, he said... Uh, which, uh, by the way, you know, I'm sorry, Kyler Murray and Cliff both have the same agent, which... Uh, <laughs> he gave his support to Rosen, but what's that worth? Right? Yeah, that's worth... Uh, but he's a, he's, a, he's a quarterback guru, right? I mean, so I think you work with what you've got, right? Why would you return over your entire organization for... I don't know. I, I'm just not, and I think Murray is a great college quarterback. I think he could be good in the NFL. I just don't think he's a uh, franchise quarterback. I, I understand the the, excite, the excitement in his youth and being in the young tw the early 20s. Like he, he wants to play. He wants to be a star now. And I feel like with what you guys said, he's not an immediate um, major league prospect in the NFL. Like I said, if he's not starting immediately, he's at least getting paid like he is. And there's just so much more voices surrounding the NFL, I feel like, than AAA ball. You know what I mean? I feel like he wants that star power right now, which I totally get, and he has the potential to become that. Mm -hmm. So I, th I think I think football is the right call for him. I think he's going to have the most fun with it. Well, he here's here, here's how I see it as well. I agree with you. He gets drafted. He knows he's going to get drafted. Um, even if he plays three seasons and it doesn't work out, he would have been three seasons probably in, in, in the minors, minors anyway. Right, right. He still has be baseball as an option. Right? Right. It's like Tim Tebow. Right. Well, <laughs> it's, it's a little different. <laughs> but uh, more like Deion Sanders, to be honest with you. I mean, he, he's a legit baseball player. Uh, not saying Tebow's not, but, you know, Tebow, We're Tebow's saying. probably with Jordan when it comes to, to the baseball. <laughs> but uh, Murray would also have to, he would have, right, Johnny, he has to pay back the $4.6 million? He's got to pay back $4.6 of the $5 million. Of the $5 million. Yeah. Right. I think he paid back some of it already to get his release, but I mean, the way how the quarterbacks are in the NFL now, they're so protected, and with Baker Mayfield, Drew Brees, Russell Wilson, I mean, you look at some of the past quarterbacks like Doug Flutie, if he had his same skill set, same size, he'd be a phenomenal quarterback in today's NFL, and this is where Kyler Murray, I think he can succeed as well. Well, is he going to succeed at Arizona, okay? And what, what, by the way, that's the other thing. Is the Josh Rosen era over? What do they do with Josh Rosen? Do they trade him? I think he's got to go. We, I, but I would you trade to be underneath someone more, more? That's what I'm looking for. Seasoned, I, I experienced. Th I think. But go ahead, Jim. If you look at the some of the teams that have made their way into the the Super Bowl in this modern era, it's they have a a good, really good, cheap, young quarterback. Uh huh. They have that with Rosen, and I think Rosen has got the arm to be a good enough quarterback to get them to that level, so they can spend in other areas of of the team. You go and do your number one pick because he wasn't number one pick. I mean, Rosen right, went to like uh, he's cheap. Right. He, he was like, number ten. Yeah, yeah number or ten. Or eleventh. Or so yeah. relatively cheap in terms of salary. Now you're going to spin that all up and and dump more salary because you're going to still owe a little bit of money to whatever his salary was. 
you're just building this negative problem in your, at your quarterback position, which I think you already have a solution for, and you can go out and spend more money in areas that are more deserving and are really going to help that team more. Now, I, 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 uh, Go ahead. I would say I'm going to play GM for the Arizona Cardinals right now. If I'm the coach right now and I love Murray, what I'm going to do is I love the chosen one, chosen Rosen. He's going to be a good quarterback. So what you do is you bring in your guy. This is the guy that you know. You bring him in, you trade Rosen to either the Dolphins or the Giants. You get a first round pick for him. You build up that capital. Now you're not paying two quarterbacks and you're getting something back in return. And so you can go spend defensively or other areas that you're weak in. That's what I would do if I were the yeah, coach of yeah. the Cardinals. I'm, I'm the sending him to Pittsburgh. Would Josh Rosen be chosen in the first early in the first round this year because that's what the Giants mm -hmm. pick. They pick early this year, so they would trade their first round pick to Arizona and they would get Josh Rosen and then they could draft another first rounder. Uh, you know what I mean? They'd have two first round picks. And right. Yeah, because okay. they're, they're drafting. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, well, no go, ahead, go ahead. Well, they're, they're drafting t in five, fir first five, right? Yeah. And we got the, kid, we got the kid from Alabama, right? You got Kyler Murray. It's very possible. I, I, yeah. Haskins is going above the kid from Alabama. Okay, let's just say that then. Well, the, the, you're talking about Tua? Yeah, yeah Tua. Yeah, yeah he's not going until next year. Yeah, Tua's yeah. staying, that's right. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah Tua's got right. one Tua more year. I think Haskins is the first quarterback off the board. So I think if Arizona does get that first quarterback pick, I, I think they should take him. I think if, if they're going to get rid of Rosen, they have to take Haskins. They have it, to. Would you, you would take Haskins over Kyler Murray? Yes. Okay, now really uh, quick. I, let me, I just want to say, I think it's a smart move for Kyler Murray to enter the NFL draft. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Okay. I don't think it's a smart move for Arizona to draft them. I, I will go I and so, say, yeah. I will go and say it's kind of like the uh, surgeon for uh, uh, Jalen Smith, mm -hmm. right? So the Cowboys drafted this guy, and it's always about the Cowboys. Don't forget that yeah. it's always about it's the always Cowboys. About the Cowboys. Oh, dude, I was gonna make the Jalen Smith guys. analogy, right? Go ahead. So, so what happened was the Cowboys drafted Jalen Smith based upon the doctor who did his surgery, so they knew what kind of. Uh, repair they're going to have to do, expectation. recovery, expectations. Well, because they use the Cowboys doctor. Because right. his brother plays for the exactly. Cowboys. Exactly. So that would be the same situation, I would say, in regards to Kingsbury. He knows what he has in Kyler Murray. So, yeah, if he's going to take a quarterback, he's going to take the guy that he knows mm -hmm. he's familiar with. He's not going to take Haskins or any other quarterback. If they're going to do that deal, that's who he's going to take. He's not familiar with him. He's never coached him a, a play. Recruited him. So what? It's a big deal. I, I, I mean, the only, good th the only good news I can say about this is he's doing it in the right order, right? He, if you want to try and be an NFL player, you got to go do NFL first. Because mm -hmm. right. you can't go to uh, baseball and then spend four years in the minors and then say, hey, I want to play football and come back at 26, 27 and try and play. You, that's not going to work. So at least he's doing it in the right order. I love the kid, Kyler Murray. Um, I said the only reason why I don't think it's a good idea for Arizona is they, they, they already put uh, – they already invested in Rosen. Right. He's got a season under his belt. I mean, he, he didn't have that great of a season, but that, that's, that's a lot of experience. Uh, uh, Klingsbury is great with quarterbacks. Right, and Rosen's got the tools. Rosen's got the tools. Prototype. And again, what you just brought up, too, there are in, I'm sorry, you did, is, is there are probably quarterbacks that are going to be worth more to the Giants. Maybe the Dolphins they could trade for a first-round pick. But they're in the top ten as well, right? They're picking within the first ten rounds? Should be. No. I mean, for, first, first ten spots? No. The Giants pick. The Giants pick at six. Six, okay. So Cardinals would have the number one pick. Right. The number six pick, and the Dolphins pick 13. I mean, but I'm saying the Dolphins could use Rosen at 13. There might be quarterbacks better right. than Rosen that will be chosen. Yeah, that rhyme. Yeah. Before the 13th pick. Sure. Well, not before the sixth pick. Right. Right? But the Giants get a number, a six quarter, a number 11 draft for a six. Right, so they're paying him less, like you said, it's a great deal. And then there is the fact that Arizona would get a number one and a number six. All of a sudden, you got two skill position players that are pretty special. Well, if Arizona doesn't pick up a quarterback, who, who are they going with? What position do they need? All right, let, let's really quick. Let's do this. We got, we got. Um, obviously, we got Kyler Murray. What other quarterbacks you think will be chosen before him? Haskins. Haskins, you Haskins. said, right? I think who he's else? the first quarterback gone. Whoever gets a quarterback that, are, that first. would. Be well, you got to talk about the quarterback from Duke, and I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Jones. He's, yeah, he's, yeah, he's. I think Jones is going to the Raiders. He's he's rising up the chart. So. Uh, Groom uh, loves Jones. I think he's going to go to the Raiders. Possibly. So is Rosen. But yeah, I think you can get Jones later. Later. Than four. Right. You know the the four which mm -hmm. Raiders pick at. So. 
So is Rosen better than Murray Haskins? Well, he's definitely better than Jones. Yeah, I, I mean, know. I like Jones a lot. Uh, but you, I'm saying, if, if you, on paper, and, you, yeah. you have I mean, to look at it from the recruiting services. Both these quarterbacks were decorated when they came out. Rosen was a top uh, PP in his uh, class. Uh, pocket pass. Great hot tub game too. Right. He was a top <laughs> quarterback in his high school class. <laughs> Kyler Murray was one of the most decorated quarterbacks in the state of Texas ever. So when he came out, he was the guy. So I don't know why A&M couldn't corral him and make him the way he should have performed, but he had another quarterback there. I can't recall who it was. But so, yeah, both these guys are decorated, and they were expected to perform at the levels that they were. So I don't think you can go wrong if you're Arizona and you, you want to go with Murray. Plenty of mock drafts have the Giants taking Haskins of uh, early on and have the Cardinals taking Nick Bosa. Oh, really? Ah. Okay. But, but, uh, but Klingsbury already said he's going to draft. Which that's a big need for them, absolutely. Yeah, they need defense. Yeah. I mean, I... imagine if they draft, if they trade Rosen, well, somebody else will pick up Bosa too then. Yeah. That second year, though, South for Florida Rosen, boy. That second year for Rosen could change everything. I mean, look at Jared Goff, turned around everything in a season. Mm -hmm. With a new coach. With a new yeah, coach. Yeah, with a new yes. coach. Coach that right. actually believes in you is big. Right. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's do this real quick, wrap it up. Yes or no, is it a smart move for Arizona to draft Kyler Murray? I we say, already know I it's a smart move not. for Kyler. Absolutely so. not. Wait, we're all in agreement it's a smart move for Kyler to enter the I, I just, I just have RG. Yes or no, Jay? I say no. Oh, not for Kyler to enter the NFL. No, no, NFL is the right way to go. Okay, I'm saying we're all in agreement in that. Yes. He should enter the NFL. Yes. So now, is it smart for Arizona to draft Kyler Murray? Yes or no? If you can get a uh, number one pick for Rosen, it is smart. Okay. I would agree with that. I'm in agreement. I don't think you should go to Arizona. Really? All right. I do agree. If, if they can get a value for Rosen. But I, I, I guarantee you, though, if that happens, there is no room for error for Cliff. I mean, if he, if, if he went out and said, this is a guy that I can make a superstar, and they fall flat, I mean, it's, it, they're, they're hitching their, their wagons to each other for sure. Yeah, I, but I love this kid, scenario. though. I love Kyler I'll, Murray. I think he's going to be successful in the NFL. Yeah, a lot of coaches, they hitch the wagon to their guy because they know what is the program in NFL. It's like three years. You don't have it like it was back in the 70s and the 80s where you could stockpile these guys and they could sit and learn. No, these guys have to go now. So if he's, from, if he's comfortable with Murray, he's got to go with his guy if he can get that first round pick. If not, Rosen's, Rosen's great. I mean, he has the potential to be a great quarterback. So he can't go wrong either way. So then it's a win-win for Arizona. Absolutely. At this point, Right. I think they're fine regardless. So yeah. far, win-win for Cleveland <laughs> and a win-win for Arizona. All right, let's get into a uh, little New baseball. World order in the NFL. Pitchers and catchers started this week. Yes. Pitchers and catchers started. All right. Uh, so pitchers and catchers have started in spring training. And uh, why hasn't anybody signed, maybe you would know, Manny Machado or Bryce Harper? And do you think this is owner ownership collusion? Is that a good way to phrase that? Yeah, I mean, it it, it, it kind of looks like that. I mean, I think they might be afraid to set the market, right, with these two guys. Um, but you can't, I mean, how long are these guys going to sit on the sidelines? I mean, there, is there a chance that either one of these guys actually are unsigned before the season starts? I don't, I don't know. I mean, the way it's going, that seems likely, but I don't know. Well, it would be for the money. And, and I think, John, we were talking about it this morning, if you want to jump in. This was your point, that if they pay them top dollar, Okay, uh, you still have guys like uh, Mike Trout and Clayton Kershaw whose contracts could be up in a year or two. Like, they can't sign that, right? Yeah, it, it'll blow the market up. It'll blow the market up. So, do you, I mean, and, and again, I don't blame the owners because. And Aaron Judge. Oh, yeah. Well, Betts. Yankees ain't losing Judge. No, no there's I no way. That, but it's, yeah. But, but as, a, as a reminder, J.D. Martinez was signed at the last day of February last year. By the by, the Red Sox, which was the biggest free agent pickup yeah. of the of the offseason. Not to say that there still is inclusion. I think that they're trying to control the market absolutely. But it's not extraordinarily uncommon to get toward the end of February. It's just it's just rare, you know. Especially yeah. with talents like those guys. I mean, uh, the market that they you know what is it? They want three hundred million. Yeah, they're, they're asking yeah, for long-term deals. Yeah, Baseball it's... owners normally spend money like drunken sailors, so, I mean, I understand this. I mean, they, they, that's historically, they've been like I think, I think what I think what John said is true, that, they're, they, that a lot of the free agent signings coming up, this could blow, this could blow the market up. Yeah, I mean, it might not... If they pay that much money 
for those two. It might not be owners, it might be agents. Well, it's always agents. It's all, yeah, agents are always agents, manipulating yeah. the market. Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, look, that's what they do. But I, I don't blame the owners for taking a stand either. I mean, you know, I feel like they're strong-armed into spending like drunken sailors, you know? Right. And, and well, I mean, this almost seems like this is going to usher in the franchise tag and, and baseball, maybe. Maybe or that's shorter, an interesting point. Or yeah. shorter contracts, you know, instead of a 10-year yeah. deal, maybe a five-year deal, and that's the standard well, for I've these guys. Well, I've always said, I think... I think Sports contracts, there should be a mandate that can't be more than three years, right? Right. I mean, 10 guys sign a three-year contract. You're going to lose value on nine of those 10, mm. right? Those guys aren't going to re-sign probably for year four for more than they're making in their year three. Maybe one of them is going to be worth more in year four than he was getting paid in year three. So almost 90% of the contracts, I think, that are signed are overinflated going forward past year three. Well, who's the baseball player that's still getting paid? He's getting paid. Bobby oh, Bobby, Bobby Bonilla. Bonilla. Bobby Bonilla still getting paid. That is the that's, best contract yeah. ever. <laughs> that's incredible. Do you know about that? No. On, I think this is based on Kevin Brown. I think this is based on Alex Rodriguez. Oh, yeah. I think this is based on Albert Pujols. I think this is based on long-term contracts that did not come to fruition years 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, yeah. yeah especially mean, those older baseball players like Pujols. I love them to death. But, I mean, that was, um, as a Cardinal baseball fan, that was... Hey, you're gonna pay this guy that much money? He's at the gonna be at the downhill of his career. Ten years later, what's he gonna do? You know. So in the National League, he can't DH and he can't hit the way he could hit. And it crushes your your, uh, your luxury tax. Your, at, your, it counts against the tax. Absolutely. Dude, you, you gotta tell him about Benia's contract. Tell tell him what. Uh, what is it? He still gets. He'll get paid the rest of his he life. He gets a million dollars right? every year. It's like until July he's something. He's like 65 years old. How old is he now? He's probably 55. So, yeah, he signed but his he's been, contract. He's been, he's been getting this million dollars for the last 15 years that he's been retired. Yeah, so he, Tyler, go play baseball. But it, but it was, go play baseball. <laughs> but it, a lot of it was God. deferred. That's what I'm saying. I mean, it was a lot of his deferred. I mean, t you know, Don, Tom Brady's probably got the same deal. I mean, mm. he's probably going to get uh, paid by the Patriots until he, you know, they probably pick, they probably have paid for his gravesite and his coffin already. T t well, I, I, Tom Brady is, was still smart with his contract, taking less money. Absolutely. Knowing his value. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. July 1st every year. Bob July 1st. Gets One million. $1.19 million, $1 million yeah. until 2035. 35. That's, that's Jay Rude money. That, oh, yeah, right there. 16 Let me more tell years. You what. And he's been getting it for 15 years. It's been at like 30 years. That's cool. But I think the year he signs for this sort of deferral, he, he played for practically nothing. I mean, he played for maybe a million or something when he could have gotten 12 or 15 million. Right, said, up front. I'll, I'll, I'll sign for a million and I'll defer it's, all this so we can put a better, get the band together. It's, it's, much, it's much more responsible. It was over 6,000 days ago. <laughs> Wow. His last baseball game was 6,000. And, and that, I bet you that 1.19 is probably more than the league minimum right now. What is that, like eight? What is that, He's like probably making years? more than the league minimum and no, hasn't played. baseball, baseball league minimum was in, in 2004 almost 10 years. it started. 2004. 2004, yeah. yeah. Wow. It's a great contract. <laughs> Who, uh, so that's the Mets, right? Yes. That is the Mets, Okay, yes. the Mets Bobby are paying Benilla? him. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say piss. I got a Bobby Vanilla baseball player. Banilla. Bonilla? Bonilla. Oh, been vanilla for years. So the Mets are paying the Mets are paying him this money. It's New York City. Wouldn't you think somebody would bump this guy off? You know what I mean? Like he goes to start his car and it explodes. I That's a lot of money paid, to be paid. <laughs> Is the family some, getting yeah, paid? Yeah, family. Fa I think it, it passes through. Yeah. So in our informative segment of the D Gentleman Show, Alex and I went to 1923 Bourbon Bar here at Mandalay Bay. It's got another speakeasy vibe. I thought I understood Scotch. I thought I understood Bourbon. Until we went to uh, one, uh, 1923 Bourbon Bar, met with Marvin, and we learned a lot. So let's check this out. And we're out. So last night at the table, we're rolling dice, and I go to Alex, hey, let's grab a drink. So we go to the bar, and Alex took it upon himself to order. Why don't you tell people what you ordered? I ordered a whiskey and Diet Coke. No sugar. Anyways, so I decided to reach out to my buddy Marv and, and uh, come down here to 1923 Bourbon Bar here at Mandalay Bay to teach this kid about whiskey, bourbon, just how to drink like a gentleman. So, Alex, are you ready to, I can't to wait. learn? You ready I can't for wait. the journey? Let's do it. Welcome to 1923, boys. What's up, Marv? Uh, how's it going? This is the right. kid I was telling you about. Okay, okay. You ready to have some fun then? He's got a lot to learn. You ready to learn? Let's go, kid. Right, do it. Come, come on. on. Let's go.
So here we are. <laughs> We're in, uh, this is Marvin's uh, art collection. Who painted all these? This is amazing. <laughs> I don't know. It's a good question. Yeah. So this is nice the cigar. cigar this is this the cigar is the room. the estate room, cigar room here at, at Bourbon Bar, 1923 in LA Bay. So I'm looking to learn some things, and Kay. Alex is looking to learn everything. <laughs> so let's start. Let's start the classic. So, so I heard you a ordered a, a whiskey and a diet coke, and what was your reasoning behind that? Well, no sugar in the diet. Good so my takeaway is, you know, if I'm not going to have it straight up. A little less hangover, actually. A little less hangover. I, you, yeah. I had to pull the umbrella out of it as well. <laughs> <laughs> and the maraschino cherry. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, there's nothing wrong with taking, you know, like whiskey and diet if that's what you're into. But as for a manlier, a, a more gentleman-like cocktail, mm -hmm. it's you'd be more prone to, like, drink something that's straight up or on the rocks or whatnot because it shows that you... You know your bourbons, your whiskeys, your scotches, or whatnot, and, and a real gentleman does. And it know? tastes better. And it tastes a lot better. That's because what you're drinking it for, these right? Companies, it's for the flavor. Yeah, you got a company like McAllen that has a 12 year old scotch in it. You know, there's a lot that goes into that. This might be the most gorgeous cube I've ever seen Thank in you. a glass. What, what's the, <laughs> the secret? The genius behind this. As everybody has their own spheres or whatnot. I like the larger spheres that actually fill the glass. You know, instead of a big giant double old fashioned, this is a regular old fashioned glass. The reason why it's clear is we use distilled water. So when you use distilled water, there's no impurities in the water. It's not cloudy. Normally you go into a bar, let's say they have chip ice all the time, you know, little, little cubes, if, if you will. When you pour it in there, the smaller those cubes are, this alcohol is going to burn it. It's going to dilute that ice a lot faster. Mm -hmm. And that ice is coming from the tap. So you're gonna dilute this high-end scotch, this high-end bourbon, this high-end rye with, with that. So this, a solid piece of ice like this, when you put on, it won't freeze, it won't dilute as fast. So therefore, you'll enjoy your, your bourbon, your scotch, your rye cold and not only that, if without it being you know, diluted. If Between the whiskey, the rye, and the, and the bourbon, mm -hmm. We're in a cigar room. Mm -hmm. Is there a drink of choice to pair with the cigar? That's a great Very question. Very good question. Thank you. They're all great. <laughs> yes. Is there a, do you have a preference? I, I like scotch. I like scotch. It's a little bit more, it has a lighter body, so I can enjoy the cigar, brings out the pair, but it also depends on the type of cigar you have. You know, you're drinking like a chocolate deep cigar, then you want to do some bourbon that could pair with it that's similar to the notes. Okay. You know, same concept with having a steak. You, By the way, we already did this. We, we you did this, this segment, right? Yeah, okay, so, so this is perfect. So this is perfect. let's say you have a steak, and uh, the right choice, there's really no right or wrong choice, but with a steak, you would think of bourbon. This is probably going to shock everybody. A scotch is probably way better with a steak, and here's why. You get the smoky flavors from the scotch, you know, a steak with on the grill, it's gonna pair perfect, it's scotch on scotch. You I never had a scotch, I've smoke. never had a scotch and steak. Try that. Go, I'm go, absolutely gonna try grill, that. Grill, grill and smoke a, a, you see that? a steak. You see what we're learning here? Scotch and steak. I know cold <laughs> beer and steak, we had yeah. a, a, a nice red wine. Yep. But a scotch and steak, I promise you, I, I can't wait to try that. Yeah. Great I'm alliteration. Doing that. All right, Marvin, what's next? Let's try some scotch. Let's do some scotch. Just a little, little, little venture out of uh, classic Macallan 12, double cast. Do this one. So, am I holding it right? Uh, yeah, just All hold right. it. See, this is what I like. Not too shabby, huh? Yeah. Right, go ahead. All right, get out of turn. There you go. I'm growing up by the swirl. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You, heard, you heard me snoring on that. That's great. <laughs> so let me, let me ask you. Oh, that's good. Very good. Clean? Very clean. What uh, notes did you guys pick up from this? I t it tasted very smoky to me. Exactly. Just yeah. like we're talking about the steak. Yeah. So imagine having a nice McAllen 12 with a nice smoked ribeye. I mean, it, it pairs amazing. We're going to move to rye. So Angel's Envy is the same distillery as uh, Woodford Reserve. Ever heard of that? Yeah, of course. So this is their higher echelon of, of, of uh, their brand. Now Angel's Envy, like I was telling won two years in a row, bourbon of the year, but the rye is even more fantastic in my opinion. The way you're describing I'm getting hungry. It's weird to say, <laughs> but I'm getting hungry from the description. Fair enough. You're from doing a great job. I can already tell you what I'm going to taste, just by the smell. Okay. I don't want to say anything. Give me yeah. that. He'll get it. <laughs> I love that we're opening our mouth. Yeah, yeah. Do it a little bit more discreetly, though, if you're out and about. You know what I mean? What do you taste? I taste rye. 
I taste like a cherryness. I get cherry. All right, so what do we got last? This uh, is this is the bourbon. This is the one I've been waiting for. This is good stuff. Basil. Good American bourbon. This is good, good old fashioned Basil Hayden, straight out of Kentucky. Is that the best bourbon around? You think? Or? This is definitely up there, one of yeah. the top affordable bourbons, if you will. You know, for best bang for your buck. You know, you get good stuff like Bullet. Uh, those are classics. Yeah, Bullet seems to be like the, it's, it's, the hacky go-to. It is. It's the go-to. You'll see it at every bar. You'll see it at Applebee's, and you'll see it at the high-end bars. But is it? You is won't it, see this at Applebee's, but you'll, you'll see it at the higher echelons of the bourbon bars. But is bars. Bullet? Is Bullet? It's a staple. Okay. It's more of but a it's, staple. But it's it's sincere though. It's, it? it's absolutely sincere. Okay, it's okay. definitely great. But is, you would say this is better than this than is, Bullet? in my opinion, I like it a little bit better. It's uh, you know, you'll see. You give it a shot. Let's give it a shot. Let's give it a run, guys. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This whole that whole open mouth thing has Change, changed the game. This game changer, it really is. That is, I'm not even kidding. <laughs> I'm not even gonna tell you. This is so smooth. <laughs> That's why I grabbed it, my friend. Yeah. Jesus, try yeah. that out. It's, it's so smooth. <laughs> I keep laughing every time you go to sniff. Very smooth. There is no burn. None. Unbelievable. Well, okay. thank you, Marvin. I Anytime. appreciate it. Of course. Thank you to 1923 Bourbon Bar. Beautiful feng shui in here in the, in the cigar <laughs> room. We're both a little buzzed. I think we're going to go order like gentlemen some more bourbon. All right. Cheers, gentlemen. Cheers. I got to tell you, man, that was that's one of our, my favorite segments because I love bourbon. Uh, we learned a lot. If you want to check out the full unedited version, just go to the DGshow.com, D as in degenerate, G as in gentleman show.com. And uh, there's a lot to learn. We didn't even go over the Manhattan there. The difference between a Manhattan and a, uh, what was the other one? And, uh, old fashioned. Uh, old, fashioned old fashioned and a Manhattan, there's a big difference. That was difference. the barrel they had. They make barrels of old fashioned. Wow. That place is cool, man. 1923 Bourbon Bar. If, if you're in Mandalay Bay, check it out. It's phenomenal. Um, yeah, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna get that for you. you you've never had like- You really don't have to. You, know, you don't wanna try it? I'll I'll try a sip, I guess. It's a smooth, sip. man. A sip, man. I but you don't smoke cigars, you said, right? No. Okay. I'm a Christian. He cardios. I do yeah. cardio, bro. Cardio. This kid's the worst. Why do we even have him on? <laughs> <laughs> makes me feel like <laughs> Yeah. Makes you feel bad for makes being an adult. Old. Old. <laughs> yeah, it makes you feel old. He's, makes you feel like a bag for drinking scotch and being a <sighs> and smoking cigars. Now 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 we're the bad guys. That's you don't smoke cigars, by the way, Lamar. No, uh, no, I. No, no, never. I actually enjoy a nice Cuban cigar every once in a while. His generation is making it flag football, though, too, so let's remember that. Are we doing a flag football league? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, I'm going pro. I'm, not, I'm quitting comedy. I'm going pro flag football. Hey, not only that, he, hey. he, they're, they're fans of my, players. My daughter can come play quarterback for you. She's on, on the varsity team in my high school. At team. the flag football team? <laughs> yeah, she's got a great arm. She's got a, got a great, great arm. arm. Yeah. 4740, let's run it. Maybe, maybe she can play in the AAF. She probably, you know, that's a great segue, could, you know? the AAF. Jay, why don't you tell us about the AAF? For those of you who don't know, that's the Alliance of American Football. It's a new league. Thank yeah. God there's football going on after football season. Um, you do all the lines for that, right? Were, were, were you on the ground level of, of this? or I was, yeah. Ground I mean, floor, I should say. They reached out to uh, some bookmakers and asked us to attend the, uh, the preseason that they had in San Antonio, closed preseason so that we could get comfortable with the league and understand the rules and the nuances that this league is going to have. You, know, you and I were talking off camera, and you were like, kind of feels like old school football because, you know, once you get to the quarterback, you actually can hit him without getting a flag. So what's the difference between the AAF and the NFL, like co compare and contrast the two, as um, far as the play goes? Gameplay -wise. As far as yeah, gameplay, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of difference between talent level and stuff. But gameplay, um, they've changed a few rules. Like, there's no kickoffs. They eliminated that because that tends to be – one of the areas where a lot of guys get hurt more than you know than not, so they wanted to eliminate that, uh, which you don't really notice on TV. It is a little bit weird in the stadium, you know, when you are used to football that there's no kickoffs. But what do they do? Get the ball to twenty. Or they get the ball to twenty and they start. Yeah, and they and they go from there. Well, not for um, nothing, because they moved. A lot. By the way, this woman has won about fifteen times in the back. Have yeah. you heard that? Somebody there needs to. Again. Somebody needs to check her turn, slot. Turn that machine off. <laughs> Jay, you need to get to the bottom yes. of this. Um, it's kind of like that in the NFL now. You barely see kickoff returns anymore because, you know, they move the ball forward. It's always 
out of the game. Yeah, you know, I mean, right. they're trying to eliminate it while, while keeping it in the game. So I think they do one that. Of the most exciting plays in football. I think. I agree too, man. Well, Especially yeah, teams if they, if they bring change, it out, make but, it break a game. Dude, remember yeah. Devin Hester? Of course. Yeah, it was two years. Ah. It was last year. I, I mean, like Devin Hester. Come on. <laughs> remember when I was twenty and Devin Hester yeah. was running around? Yeah. You guys, you guys remember Tom Brady? Yeah. <laughs> He's old now. Well, they almost, I mean, uh, Cordell Patterson almost broke it in the Super Bowl opening yeah. kickoff. I mean, uh, the kicker, uh, Zerline, I had to tackle him, I think. To be honest with you, it's mo where, where, where it does affect people is, is in the blocking, in the wedge, in the right. wedge breaking. Right, right, right. You know, it's not really the runner so much as, a, as the players. The front line of kickoff return has got to be the worst job in the NFL. Dude, I was in the wedge my whole life. Through Little League, high school, I was, I was in the wedge, and I was a wedge buster. I'm, I'm still on, in the wedge, specialty. man. <laughs> Every day of life is like being in the wedge. No, my so goal. What else is different, Jay? What else? So no oh, yeah, no else. special what teams. Else? You start uh, on the no, 20. Yeah, you got to go for two. Um, okay. you know, there's no, no field goals? goals? No field goals. So no, no, the team no, no, there's field goals. There, there's no PATs. Right. So you have to go for oh. two. Um, and The mercy uh, rule. The, yeah, right. And then there's, um, you know, the referees are probably, they're, they're going to call more defensive penalties and offensive penalties enough because they kind of want the league to open it up a little bit more. Well, you were saying that there's not as many personal fouls and roughing the passer calls as there is like defensive holding. Right. Because the offense, the offensive line has more leeway. They can hold more pretty much. Right. right. They can hold a little bit more. Um, you know, so if you're getting to the quarterback, you're doing a great job as a defender. Um, there's uh, the officiating is a little bit different too. I mean, they have instant replay and they have a, what they call a sky judge who can overrule like, if he sees something that happens that doesn't draw a flag, he'll buzz him, he'll call down, he'll say, hey, this happened, you know, we, this should be called. That's Sean Wow. Yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> we right. could have used that in the Rams-Saints uh, game. So, you know, yeah. uh, any egregious error that was either uh, not caught or was called and was an obvious mistake that it shouldn't have been called, this guy up in the booth can call down. There she is, winning again. I bet she's on the penny slots. You ever <laughs> see that person? Hey, penny slots. She won slots. like 10 bucks and is freaking out every two minutes. Penny slots are crazy. That's like $5 a poll nowadays, too. you got to bet like 650 pennies <laughs> every time you spin the button. So, I lost a grand on a penny slot one uh, time. That's a, that's a long night. How much did Alex lose? Alex. <laughs> So, anyway. no, I mean, it's a great brand of football, I think. And we, and we are, you know, we're partners with them in the MGM Resort. So we're the line originator. We put up the a line early on, on the week on Tuesday. Um, and it's, you know, a, a pretty tricky kind of area to do it right now. We're, we're in week two. Week one, a couple of the games ran. Uh, Orlando opened up uh, four, ran to seven. Uh, a lot of the totals we had at like 40 uh, or 56, 57, 58, they all closed at like 51. You know, they were bet under. So... Um, a lot of volatility right now, but you know that'll start to tighten up as we get a bigger sample size as the as the season goes on. So mm -hmm. uh, we had a few games run uh, on Tuesday when we put them up as well. What's but, the what's the player what's the player selection process? Are they drafting out of college? Can the kids come straight out of high school to it? No, yeah. So these are all college uh, uh, players that have been through college. Um, a lot of them are ex NFL guys. Like a lot of the mm. a lot of the linemen, offensive and defensive. Linemen I saw Nick are, are, Folk kicking out there. Are, yeah, Nick Folk. He's on a, a San Diego, I think. Our offensive linemen, are, a lot of them are ex-NFL guys that maybe got, you know, a cup of coffee for like, uh, you know, a season or a playoff squad okay. or something or practice squad. Um, you know, you've got uh, Trent Richardson, the running back for the Iron. Um, you've got uh, Sims, Sims, uh, younger. Chris Sims? No, the other um, Sims. Matt Sims. Matt, Billy Sims. Yeah, Remember Billy Alabama, Sims? Right? Yeah, yeah. The one, the one thing about the league too that is really, really good is they stack the rosters regionally. So the yeah. teams in the South are all players from the SEC or that conference ACC. The teams from the West are all players from the Pac-12 Mountain West. So that gives the fan base a better chance to see and former they players brought, that they like. But that was a good question. really good high-profile coaches as well. I mean, but, but Mike Singletary, but wait, Neuheisel, uh, Spurrier. Spurrier. There too. But yeah. I'm saying, what's the selection process? They just reach out to all these older... Is there a draft? Yeah, is yeah, there a well, draft? No, these, they're, they're, Do they was, have a certain amount? Yeah, they had a, they had a quarterback draft um, about a month and a half ago where they drafted all the quarterbacks, and then they basically, the teams, the, the uniqueness of it is, is the teams are owned by the league. So there's no team ownership. It, they're all employees of the league. So the coaches, the players, they're all employees of the league. So the league controls all the teams, which is a weird thing, but it provides a great uniform across the, the well, what's, thing. Yeah, what's, what's so the... I think they all got into it. <laughs> there was a pool of players that were available to, to draft. I mean, Josh Johnson was the first player, first quarterback drafted. And then he got called up to the Redskins, so he's now on the Redskins uh, roster. He was going to play for the Fleet, but he got moved up to, to he, the NFL. He can't do both, though. 
Uh, he could come back down, but he has no reason to because he's signed on the Redskins still right now. So, I got you. you know, that's the the ideal for this league is it's a springboard back in the league. Team. Right. Well, I'll say this. If, if you got a, a defensive defensive end that's sacking quarterbacks in this league, the NFL might seriously want to take a look at that, especially if, you know, these offensive linemen are allowed to hold. I saw this. I think it was San Antonio, San Diego. What, what was that? Yeah, that, that was the opening game. I, I watched that game, and, man, they were hitting. I'm yeah. like, dude, this is football. Yeah. Yeah. They were, they were the, striking. The good thing, too, is it's, they have an app that you're able to follow a lot of stuff on. It's really interactive. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's going to get better and better as it goes along. And, you know, our wagering menu is going to get bigger and bigger, too. And they going to start doing fantasy? Uh, I, they have it. The app is built for fantasy. Fantasy. So I'm, See? I'm sure it'll young be kids. into fantasy. fantasy. Right, right. Hey, no loyalty, just fantasy. Just They're into play players, man. Yeah. They're yeah. all into That's branding it. and players. Right. But, it. yeah, no, it's going to be a good league. I, th I think it fits a very nice niche uh, of, of a time in the sports book where – you know, you're going to have some first couple of weeks here. It's going to be ba basketball, basketball, NCAA. But then once that's over, you know, they're going to have like six weeks of their own where they're going up against a little bit of baseball. And that, you know. How long is the season? Ten weeks. Ten weeks. And, and there's then, six te uh, eight teams, right? Eight, eight, teams. Teams. eight teams. And then uh, they're going to have uh, two playoff games. And then the, 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 championship. the championship game is going to be here in Las Vegas now, at Sam Boyd. Here's my question for you. As an odds maker, what are the odds that this, this league is going to make it? There's been... Many that have tried oh, the yeah. XFL to the USFL. There was also there was an American Football League too. I remember mm -hmm. from back in the day that that failed. So I, I would say, I mean, because there's a nice tight relationship because Bill Polian is a co-founder of this league mm -hmm. with the NFL. The NFL is looking at this as as definitely like a, a farm team, a AAA kind of uh, aspect. The to G it. League and yeah. NBA. Right, right. So I think that this league is built to to be one that can be successful. Now XFL is trying to come back in next year as well. I don't know if they're going to have that relationship with the NFL that this league does, but Charlie Ebersol is, you know, the co-founder with Bill Polian, smart, smart kid. Wasn't he a producer? Kid. He is a producer. Dick yeah. Ebersole? Dick, Eber Dick Ebersol's son, oh. Charlie, and I he's he's a co-founder with with Bill Polian, and and you know, I mean, they've they've got they they're doing it right. You know, I mean, they're playing. They're they're all the pe players get paid the same. You know, they get paid like sixty, seventy thousand. The quarterback to the kicker gets sixty thousand. Then you get paid based on how often you're on the field, how many plays you run, how productive you are. You get spiffs, so to say, like a, use an old uh, car salesman term. So, you know, production produces paychecks for them. And like they that. also get paid on how productive they are in the community, on Twitter, on social media, on CSR, community service uh, stuff that they engage in. They get a ticking fee for say. that as well. <laughs> so to be a good citizen, to be a good player, it all bundles together, and they get paid on that. So I think it... It's it's a it's a unique. Uh, unique I was going to say that I think the reason why it will be successful is because of the way the word can spread nowadays. I mean, you know, when you were looking at those television contracts back in the '80s with the USFL, who, by the way, tried to launch as a league based on star power, right? But see, they wanted to fight the NFL. But, well, you know, they wanted to be in direct well, competition. This league wants to be complementary. Well, what I was going to say is that the contracts were what was the problem. The NFL was saying, "Hey, if you air this, we're not going to allow you to air this," and right. they pretty much. Put the kibosh on it. Now you have ten different ESPNs. You know, right. well, the internet. I think NFL the league is going to be successful. These, these games yeah. are actually on NFL.com. Yeah. I mean, the NFL, NFL channel. Network, yeah. the NFL Network. Right. So, I, I think mean, I think it'll be a success, sports, and yeah. I'm glad. I know my wife's probably not happy. Yeah, that I'll be watching football again. Twelve for more another weeks of football. Twelve more weeks, but hey, man, it helps me. Yeah, yeah. So are you guys getting action on this now? Uh, yeah, you know, and going into it, we were kind of wondering what level it was going to fall into. I was thinking it was going to be somewhere, you know, maybe in the, the WNBA level, um, you know, sort of like five to 10,000 a game. You know, we were going to be booking, you know, maybe 20,000 if it's a, a, a really primetime game. But I think the fact that it's on television and it's on, you know, like really, you know, good television packages that you can get, CBS, you know, NFL, it's not on like, you know, the Lifetime.com or whatever channel, um, so that you can... You know, people love to bet what they can watch. And so I, I was anticipating a certain level, and we got about three times that really? opening weekend. Wow. We did have a bunch of activation on property here. We had a view party at TAP over at MGM. We're going to have a view party here at Mandalay Bay, I think, uh, in a couple of weeks. There's going to be a view party at the beer house at the, the park. So we're actively activating, you know, doing activations these, on property. Are so these mostly, it's pushing it. Are these mostly wise guys, or are they mostly squares? Yeah, 60% of our money, I think, last week came from Sharps. You know, yeah. they were betting the totals. They ran the Orlando game up. Um, you know, they think that it's a soft spot as well. I mean, it's, like I said, a lot of volatility in this league right now. The, the new. good news is, is, you know, we offer short prices. We're taking a dime and a nickel to it, a nickel on the total and a dime on the side. And that means $1,000 and $500 for, 
those uneducated gamblers. Whatever, so. adults. He knows exactly <laughs> what the terminology I'm talking about, but that's, yeah. So, you know, for those out there as well that not sure what a diamond or nickel is. Can you explain to the viewers what shading is? Oh, yeah. Like, so you got to know who you're, who you're booking to, right? At right. At Lamar's Hotel at the MGM Grand, very strong West Coast. Here at the Mandalay Bay, very strong West Coast bias. Uh, where my office is at, at Mirage, a very strong East Coast bias. So if we have UCLA versus Syracuse, I can predict that I'm going to get more money at Mirage on Syracuse, Syracuse. Mm -hmm. and at these two properties, I'm going to see more UCLA money show up. So I'm at the advantageous position where I can sit back and be a little more patient in the way I book because I know I'm going to get two-way because I have multi-property network. Whereas, say, a competitor that's a standalone book that necessarily is an East Coast bias, if he gets bet on Syracuse, his, his UCLA money not sh might not show up, so he has to start to, to uh, uh, move the number that way. So he is going to shade Syracuse. So if to Syrac get people to, to, to put on the West Coast. Well, to, 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 to either get, to make them the book. to either make them lay the worst number possible, mm -hmm. or take a little make it an offering that's more attractive on UCLA side that maybe the Sharps will take early, so that when he does move to that number later, when the public pushes him there, he's already got offsetting money. So basically, if the book is all the way up here on one team and the other, you start shading to try and even it out. Yeah. Well, a shade is normally what you do on the opener. Right. Like you're going to shade a certain way. Oh, when, when the line you, opens. Right. You're, you're anticipating that action. Right. So, for example, when you know back in the East Coast, like, for example, now that betting is legal yeah. on everywhere on the East Coast, so you know we're going to get a lot of Eagles money back in that area. So you're going to shade that number towards the Eagles so you get some buyback on the other side. Dude, it is just a cat and mouse game with you guys. So there's That's all a it is. But there's a shade and then there's, and there's an opinion. Wait, say that clean. Go ahead. Yeah. I didn't understand any of what <laughs> That's why you're here. Happening. You came to the right place. My you, go, you go, can you explain shading? You didn't explain shading at all. I didn't hear <laughs> shading anywhere in that. But there's a shade and then there's an opinion, right? Uh -huh. And generally, I get to have an opinion. My director of trading gets to have an opinion. But all my other guys underneath me, they can shade a little bit. So like if I, an opinion is like you really push the point spread to a certain way because you want to book yourself into a certain spot. Can I, can I put this simply for him? Just Yes. All right. Let's just say you have two teams and you're anticipating that everybody's going to bet on team A, right? Mm. Before, the, before the lines open up. Okay. So what they do is they make it more appealing to bet on team B mm -hmm. in the opening line to get, that, to get more money on that team then switch the line because they know in this way it kind of keeps it even, correct? Correct. So shading is giving more points to a team that they know or are anticipating people are not going to lay money on to try and get it the books even. Does that make sense? Let's say you're on Tinder and let's say you're on... <laughs> no, I was just about to say, so you have two girlfriends, You have two right? apps. Okay, I'm, I'm <laughs> Two girlfriends. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. Okay, so, so this girl right here, you know, you know you're in. Brittany, yeah. Okay, this girl you know you're not in. Ashley. You're going to so have to buy dinner, given, right? take her out a little so this invest one, a little bit now more. Now you got $500 to spend on a date. Okay. So you know that you're already in here. In, in, you're going to put more on this date to try and impress yeah. her. Uh -huh. And then once you got her, then you just stop spending money and now you okay. go back to this girl. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. That makes sense. Okay. Do you know you know what else shading means for like under 25, right? What's that mean? Shade, shading, like throwing shade. Like shade, oh, that's uh, different. Yeah, shade, that I means thought, you're hating on somebody. I thought right? you were going to be like, Nick Foles has commitment issues. I was like, ah, oh, that's the T. Got it. Like, that, <laughs> that would be shade. We're not Whatever throwing shade, we're about. shading. And John, you look a little bewildered. Yeah, I want to kill myself right now. <laughs> I thought that was a great analogy. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Got to put it in relatable terms. All right, check this out, Brett. All right, guys, so uh, we're going to learn more about baseball once, once the season starts. This was fun. Who needs Alex, man? Let's... Well, right. Well, at least Alex understands the betting aspect, but uh, there has to be a little too much actually. The gentleman show. <laughs> little too much. We might have like a show where we just do like a uh, Alex we, intervention. I don't know if he understands. Yeah. <laughs> ah, he just goes nuts. Let, can we have a moment of silence for Alex, please? Okay, Alex, we missed you. We're sorry you didn't make the plane, but uh, you know what? Just fly coach. You had to, you had to be a big shot and fly a private jet. Uh, this is what happens. Got a right. baller. Now, we're going to be back in a few weeks for March Madness. We're going to take a, some time off. This is like our 10th week in a row. But keep following us on social media. Go to the DGshow.com, the, the D as in degenerate, G as in gentleman show.com. And uh, we're going to be coming back strong. But for Ma March Madness, we're going to have our brackets 
have you guys play along as well. Basketball special guests. Oh, yeah, we're going to have some basketball special guests. Javon will be back. We missed him, too. Rick Pitino? What, why are you telling our viewers what's going on? Just hopeful. <laughs> that's John's, that's John's uh, uncle. All right. <laughs> on his mother's side. God bless. God bless. So, for Lamar Mitchell, Jay Rude, Brett Ernst, and our special guest, Matt. Hey, Matt, really quick. What's up? Uh, I was going to say, uh, you want to plug anything before you go? Uh, you guys can just check me out on tour with Dane Cook. I've got a couple of dates coming up with him on his upcoming tour. And I'm going to be in Alabama the last weekend of February at the Stardome. Uh, you, you've done the Stardome. Yeah, I love the Stardome. Great club, great Birmingham, club. Birmingham, Alabama. Great uh, and I'm going to be in Chicago on March 14th. It's uh, on the south side of Chicago. So Riddles? I, no. <laughs> no, you well, know just, if you should come. Where can they go? Where they, where, just give me your social uh, uh, right. Social media can check me out on Instagram, uh, at Matt Reif, M-A-T-T-R-I-F-E. Uh, Twitter, it's Matt Reif, I-T-S-M-A-T-T-R-I-F-E. And if you uh, didn't like me, you can follow me at B-R-E-T-E-R-N-S-T. Thank you very much. I appreciate Spelling it. Spelling lesson. Nah, he's a great kid. I've known him a long time. Forever, dude. And he's a good Threes kid. of years. So, yeah, so make sure you check him out. And uh, that's about it. Remember, just because you're a degenerate doesn't mean you have to stop acting like a gentleman. Make sure you call your moms. God bless.